In this example, we're going to be looking at switch statements. Um, a switch statement is basically conditional logic. It's a construct that uh, you can use to basically emulate a bunch of if something is true, do this, else if something is true, do this, else if something is true, do this. It's basically a uh, control logic that allow you to um, you know, determine uh, sort of a, a path of execution through your application, right? So what I've built here um, is a small one form. Um, I have basically, uh, the idea here is we're gonna have um, a number provided by the user here. You'll notice that this text box instance is called num1. Uh, we'll have a number here. This is num2. Um, here we have a combo box, which is called operation. If we look at the items that I've added to the combo box, you'll see add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And so basically what we're going for here is when uh, a user changes either a value here or a value here uh, or the operator, then we're going to basically update this. We're going to do the math, essentially. We're going to update this result label. This is just a label called result. Um, with the correct answer or whatever the math uh, turns out to be. So uh, again, um, what we need to do is create a, a, a event-driven application, but then we're going to use a switch statement that's going to do the math for us according to what's selected here um, and then show the result. So let's um, let's tackle that first, okay? So I'm going to go basically to uh, the code behind the WinForm by clicking View Code, and I'm going to create a method called do math. Um, you can make it private or public, doesn't really matter. Um, it's not going to return any value because again, our purpose here is really just to update this label. So we can have this method do that for us. Uh, and I'm gonna call it do math. And we don't need to pass it any arguments. It can get all those on the fly, okay? Cool, so now one way to do this, right? Um, or, or the first thing maybe we wanna do is let's just assume we're gonna work only with integers here, whole numbers, we're not working with decimal points uh, for this particular example, um, is let's go ahead and store these two values um, that are currently in string form because they're in a text box. Let's store those into uh, an integer um, variable. So we can do that simply by parsing whatever is in num1.txt, right? And if you recall again, this text box is num1. So when we say num1.txt, we're getting the value of this text box, whatever is there. Um, and we're going to store it in a variable that's an integer variable called n1. I'm going to do the exact same thing um, here, except for instead of n1, we're going to have n2. Instead of num1.txt, we're going to have num2.txt. Um, the next thing we need to do is get the operator, right? Um, we can leave this as a string. But let's get the operator. Um, we'll say o for operator. Um, and if you recall, our operator is called, or the combo box is called operation. So operation dot text, right, will be a string. Um, and what I usually like to do as I go along this, right, is I'll uh, I'll just do a little testing um, to make sure that I'm getting what I think I'm getting, right? So let's just show a little message box here. Um, uh, let's see what I do and we'll show the operator and we'll show another space and two, right? Um, and what I'm gonna do is basically run this at the beginning, right? When we just run our form, just we're just testing. We're just making sure that this is working as designed. Now, probably because there's no, um, uh, excuse me, operator, by default selected here, I'm going to go ahead and just initialize that as well. So I'm going to say operation.txt equals, we'll say divide for now, okay? And then let's run this guy and see what we get. Now you'll see first off, because this do math um, is getting executed uh, off the bat, right? Um, you'll see that uh, we have 100 divided by 100, which is what we see here, right? 100 divided by 100 which is exactly what we're hoping for, right? So I'm gonna remove these guys now. So we know that that's working like we like we expect it would, right? And now we get sort of to the the uh, the part where we, we wanna figure out the math, right? Where we wanna actually complete the math. We know what the operator is and we know what the two numbers are that we wanna do with that operator. Um, so if we weren't using a switch statement, we would probably do something like this, right? We would say if O, oops, O equals uh, add, then we would say 
you know, uh, message box, or actually we, we know we don't want to do, we want to do result, right? We want to say, this is called result. This, this label is called result. We would say result dot text equals n1 plus n2, right? Else, if o equals minus, right, we would do result dot text equals n1 minus n2. You see what's going on here, right? So we're just kind of a, uh, basically four else ifs, right? And the reason that that's yelling at me, I'll fix that in a second. So plus minus, multiply, we had an x, and divide, we have slash, right? And we just need to change these operators here, right? Uh, multiply. Now, the reason this is yelling at me is because this is going to produce an integer, and we're trying to store an integer in something that is looking for a string. So I'm basically just going to put these in parentheses and then two string them. Oops. Two string. And then I'm going to copy this guy over. All right. One, two, three. And then we just need to put the leading open paren there. All right. And did I spell that wrong? Let's see. Is it all lowercase? Oh, capital T. Let's fix that real quick. There we go. Um, okay, cool. So what you see now is basically we have this conditional logic right here. That basically, if this resolves to true, if O equals a plus sign, right? And remember, O is the operation that we're getting from our combo box. Then we're going to execute this piece of code. Else, if O is this piece of, or matches uh, the minus sign, then we're going to basically execute this piece of, of text. If none of these are true, then we're basically going to ignore all of them the way that we've written this. If we wanted sort of a default um, operation, um, you know, we could do uh, something like this um, equals no operator selected, right? So essentially, if none of these are true, this is going to serve as our default and this is what will happen, right? Um, let's go ahead and hook this up to uh, our operator combo box so that we can have an event that will drive this, okay? And what I mean by that is when this changes, what we want when the value changes is we want to be able to call this method, right? So that we can do the math every time we change the value. So I'm just going to double click on him uh, on the combo box and the default uh, event handler um, when you double click on a combo box is as we expected selected index changed okay so what I'm gonna do here now is I'm basically just gonna call this method right our do math method so every time that combo box gets changed we're going to call our do math method right now again we haven't gotten to a switch statement yet this is just simply a bunch of if else's um, that are gonna gonna work. This will work just fine. Um, the difference between this and the switch statement, the switch statement is just a little bit cleaner, I feel, than than doing a bunch of if houses. So let's do this. Let's run this now, and let's change this to a plus. Now you'll notice that our our code was executed. The plus uh, is what the operator was. So what we got was n1 plus n2. If I change this to minus, we get zero. If I change it to times, we get ten thousand. And if I change it to divide, we get one. If I change this to some nonsensical whatever, it won't let me, right? I guess it will let me. It'll let me type into it, but it doesn't fire the selected index change. Um, we probably would have to make that a text value changed um, if we wanted that to work. Um, but you see what's going on here, right? You see that essentially, um, whenever that operator is changed, this, this method is getting called. We're, we're storing the values in each of the text boxes. Uh, and we're capturing what the operator is, and then we're doing some level of comparison on the operator to determine how we should um, do the math, right? Um, so a switch statement works very, very similar to this, just the syntax is a little bit different. So I'm going to leave this here just so we can look at it as we go, and, and actually I'll probably copy and paste a little bit from there so I don't have to retype some of this. But with the way a switch statement works is you use the keyword switch, and you have an open parentheses. Now this is where you switch what you want, or this is where you specify what you want to switch on. Um, in terms of this, um, you know, kind of what we're comparing all of these to is whatever is stored in O, right? 
our variable O that we created up here. So that's what we want to switch on in our switch statement is O. We're going to switch on that operation. Okay. And I'm just going to close this. So then you have open brackets, close brackets. Now what you do, instead of having a bunch of, of ifs, you basically specify ca a case, individual cases that are possible, right? So case is a keyword. And what I'm going to do is do case, the plus sign, and then a colon, okay? And then what's going to happen is, or below this, what we're going to do is specify what code we want to execute if this case becomes true, okay? So I'm going to copy and paste that from, from up above. And then what you need to do is add a break statement. And the break is basically going to drop you out of this switch statement altogether and allow execution to continue on down the program. Um, so as you might imagine, we're simply going to copy this over four more times, right? So case, 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 and then, oops, we don't need that last one. Right? So plus, minus, multiply, divide. Let's fix these operators, plus, minus, multiply, oops, excuse me, divide. And then, uh, again, to capture this sort of else kind of catch all, um, the case or the switch statement has something called default, which is the default case. So if none of these other, um, oops, case. Oh, that's not right. So I was like, wait, that's all right. D A F A. There we go. Um, do default, we could say result.text equals no operator. Right? And then we'll still have our break. Okay? So the way this is good, these two pieces of code work exactly the same. Okay? We're basically comparing the value of O to some set of values or some strings or, or whatever we need, right? Um, and then if the case matches or if O matches this value or this value, then we're gonna execute this code and then we're gonna break, um, kind of like this, right? So these two pieces of code do exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just comment out these. We'll leave them up there in case anybody needs to, to look at them or if we need to look at them again. Um, and what I'm also going to do while I'm here before I test this is I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to add events handler for this that says uh, if num1.txt is changed, I'm going to do the math again. And then also if uh, this number is changed, we're going to call do math as well. All right. Um, if we look at the events here, and I'm trying to think if there is a text changed. Text changed, right. So I'm going to double click on this guy and I'm going to add do math here as well. So you'll notice text change is probably a little bit different than selected index change. And I'm hoping what I can do with this, uh, I believe I can, is to cause um, this default statement to be true, right? If I put something other than plus, minus, multiply, or divide manually into that combo box by typing it, um, I should see no operator show up in our result field, our result label. So let's test this now. Okay, so uh, let's do uh, 100 plus 100. Again, we're getting 200, right? If I change this to five, you'll notice that it automatically changed the value here. If I change this to um, 10, 15, we get, right? Same with this, five divided by 10. Uh, we have it set on only using integers, so that makes sense, right? If I change this to 20, 20 divided by two is two, right? So if I come in here and I type something like Y, uh, you can't read it because this isn't big enough, but uh, you'll see that we basically triggered that um, default statement in our switch statement that says no operator was specified. Um, if I if I come in here just to show you this works, even I manually type a plus sign, you'll see that, that that still works as we intended. So here's a very, very simple example of a switch statement. Um, again, it works a lot like uh, if else, if else, else if um, that you'll see here. Um, it's, they, they perform exactly the same, but this is often a lot cleaner and a lot easier to read and follow what's going on um, than this can be. So um, hope this helps you. Good luck. Take care.